American Dad's resident alien may be the universe's biggest degenerate. His drunken selfishness is the stuff of legends, as is his love of lying and taking on various personas. Don't look so surprised, you know it's me. Throughout the course of the series, his history has become increasingly complicated, and it goes much further back on Earth than his time with the Smith family. In this video, I'll be going through Roger's entire life and breaking down his myriad of alter egos. Hi, I'm Lydia from Screen Portal, and this is the complete timeline of Roger Smith. I do what I want, when I want. Exhibit A. <laughs> Roger in space. Next to nothing is known about Roger's time before landing on Earth or his relationship with his people. But it's not hard to imagine that they really didn't like him since they launched him into space with no plan to bring him back. But there have been a few details dropped here and there. Roger's mother might actually still be alive. At one point he mentions wanting to Skype her so he could show off his fantastic shorts. I wish mom could figure out Skype so I could show her these shorts. At the same time, he has a much different relationship with his father. When I turned 15, I ate my dad. But the reason he was launched off world may have had something to do with a previous relationship. He claims to have had a relationship with the ruler of that same home world, Emperor Zing. Oh my god, okay, wow, can we please be grown ups about this? Because I can't. And this may have played a part in the entire situation. Wild West Roger Despite what Roger had told many people, he had set on Earth before his supposed original arrival. It turns out that Roger crashed into Earth in the 1800s, where he was discovered by a family of fur trappers. They took him in and treated him as one of their own. But one day, their wagon wheel came loose, and so Roger chased it downhill for a couple of days. By the time he got back up, his adopted family had died of various causes. Later on, when he's adopted by the Smith family, he still harbors that fear that everyone he loves will eventually die. And I realized, I I'm gonna outlive the Smiths too. So in the episode Ori Tron Trail, he actually traps them inside a classic video game in order to keep the Smith family alive forever. He eventually let them out, but it goes to show just how much of an effect his first pioneer family had on him. Cured as a cucumber. The thought of you dying doesn't bother me at all anymore. Oh, Roger, that's all we could ever hope for. But hold your horses, we're getting a bit too ahead of ourselves, so let's go back to when Roger actually met the Smith family for the very first time. But first, if you're enjoying the video, then do me a favor and click that subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, YouTube isn't going to push this video. It takes a fraction of a second, it's free, and as a very special thank you, here is a picture of a baby penguin. Thank you so much, and let's get on with the video. Meeting the Smiths Roger Crash landed on Earth for the second time in Roswell, New Mexico. He was captured and imprisoned in Area 51, and when Roger attempts to escape the facility, he is cornered by CIA agent Stern. Don't hurt me! I know it sounds cliche, but I mean you no harm. But when Stan accidentally knocks himself out and grenades are thrown into the room, Roger throws Stan down a chute, therefore saving his life. As such, Stan owed Roger a lifelong death, and to repay him, Roger moved in with the Smith family in secret. Roger believed that he was sent to Earth by his people to decide the fate of humanity, when in reality, Roger was just a crash test dummy. I was sent here on a top secret mission to decide if the people of Earth should live or die. And his people honestly didn't care if he was dead or alive. Crash test dummy? It was a pretty huge blow to his ample ego, believing he had the power to annihilate the Earth gave Roger a sense of self-worth. So to make him feel better, Stan gave Roger his EpiPen, which he kept on him in case he ever ate shellfish, something he was deathly allergic to. When the time comes, you can decide whether I live or die. 
which was a terrible decision as Roger fed Stan crayfish cookies, causing him to have a severe reaction, but Roger had already used up the EpiPen to give himself an adrenaline rush. It felt amazing. Roger's Personas in order to stay under the radar of the CIA, Roger disguises himself so he can go outside. It's such a big process that Roger even has a massive factory for creating, organizing, and storing all of his costumes. All my characters are conceived here. I'm sure you recognize some of my best work. But Roger, like everything he does in life, takes this to the extreme. He has a myriad of alter egos and personas. He has a career in pretty much every profession, from wedding planner, Jeannie Gold, wedding planner, to psychiatrist, Roger Smith, pretend psychiatrist, sounds like you could use my help. When Francine joins Facebook, we can see that Roger has 3,208 different profiles for each of his alter egos. Balancing several lives at once is a challenging job, so it's no surprise to learn that Roger has a borderline personality disorder. Can I use your crap? Get out of here! There's a bathroom in the park! The service here sucks! Have you even seen a waiter? As such, he sometimes loses track of who he is, such is the case with his persona, Sidney Huffman. Sidney was a mild-mannered guy with a job making Bibles and had a sweet girlfriend. However, his perfect life was turned upside down when he started receiving death threats from a mysterious stranger. Sydney, this is Roger Smith. You screwed with the wrong guy. Prepare to have your life destroyed. This stranger was none other than himself. One of my personas has taken on a life of its own. It turns out that Roger had been leading a dual life without even realizing it. And he even put a hit on himself. And I probably charged it to me! Roger confronts his alter ego and assures them that they can both live, but he betrays himself by stabbing Sydney in the back and effectively killing that part in his life. Now I can spend four hours just talking about his many, many alter egos, but instead, let's just take a look of his most prominent personas. Wheels and the Legman it's always amusing when Roger ropes in other members of the family into his personas. You're just slightly better at this than I expected. Francine actually makes a pretty good sidekick for Roger, but the only problem is, is that the two of them can get pretty competitive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Steve is his most frequent co-conspirator. Their most successful collaboration has been the crime-solving duo of Wheels and Legman. They do a terrible job of being detectives. Wheels and Legman take a case, argue constantly, and accomplish absolutely nothing. The only reason they ever solve a case is because Roger committed the crime. Yeah, I took that. What? And they accidentally stumble across that realization every time. Thanks to Wheels and the Legman, as mentioned earlier, Roger forgets about his personas, and that includes Ricky Spanish. Ricky Spanish. Although Roger may have forgotten him, the town of Langley Falls didn't. When Roger tried on the costume for the first time in years, he was chased by an angry mob. Only then did Ricky's reputation come back to Roger. There's hardly a person in this town who he hasn't stolen from, cheated, or worse. Ricky Spanish has done some terrible things, like stealing children's candy, kicking old ladies in the groin, and defecating into an open chest cavity during open heart surgery. The only thing rougher than Roger dressed as Ricky Spanish is Stan dressed as Roger dressed as Ricky Spanish. Ricky Spanish. The Army of Rogers Rogers many personas would end up biting humanity in the ass and led to the downfall of mankind in the episode The 200. One day, Roger thought it would be a great idea to climb inside the Hadron Collider. When it goes off, a chain reaction causes a worldwide devastation. 
I feel like I'm gonna fart. <laughs> the Earth is now a wasteland, and if that wasn't enough, hundreds of his personas were unleashed upon the world. 200 me's? I don't understand. All oh, right, I remember. The army of Rogers and the last of humanity clash in a huge battle. The surprising thing is, is that everything doesn't return to normal by the end of the episode, so this is most likely a non-canon episode. But still, this episode has a very important message. Don't let Roger and a Hadron Collider. I need to be watched very closely. Roger's Dark Side Roger is very sensitive and will take the smallest insult to heart. For example, when Steve stole his cookie, Roger vowed revenge. Eat up. Eat up. Roger went to great lengths to make Steve believe he was adopted. I'm gonna make you cry and dip my cookie in your tears. He even roped in a poor couple into his scheme and made them believe Steve was their long lost son. Gotcha! Those aren't your parents! That's for taking my cookie! All that for just one little measly cookie. Although that is pretty dark, that is nothing compared to the extreme lengths Roger will go for revenge. When Roger starts his own limousine chauffeur business, he picks up a group of frat boys. When he drops them off at their destination, they jump and dash without paying their $20 fare. Most cabbies would let this go, they'd be annoyed, but they would drive off eventually. But not Roger, oh no. Instead, he tracked down every single frat boy and killed them, running each one of them down with his car. When the last surviving member tries to escape on a plane, Roger finds him. Despite the plane already being hundreds of feet in the air, Roger crashes his limousine right through it. Yes, he gets his target, but also kills every single person on board too. Ah! Roger! I'm sorry, I got the bloodlust. So, if you're watching this video, take one word of advice. Do not cross Roger. And that is the only tip of the iceberg when it comes to his most heinous acts. The prisoner killed two dozen guards, then built a boat out of their corpses to get away. And honestly, I can make an entire video just looking at his dark side. So let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in watching that. Roger's son, Rogu. When you think of Roger, father figure isn't the first thing that comes to mind, or even the hundredth. Especially after everything he's done throughout the years. But the murderous alien would become a daddy in the show. In the episode Persona Assistant, Roger grew a huge growth on his head. He got it removed, but somehow it came to life. His name's Rogu. Rogu. Roger refers to Rogu as his son, and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree either. As just like his old man, Rogu has no squirms about killing anyone who gets in his way. That's Rogu. He loves shooting people in the nuts. He's not wrong, it's funny. And so for now, that ends the complete timeline for Roger. Let me know your favorite Roger moments in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.